That's amazing. Um, Justin, and in, in speaking on that same point, um, I even thought about this. I've been to school. You've been to college as well. Uh, so many times that we're taught things that we know aren't even historical facts, but it's just this white supremacist um, dogma that's just pushed down. And even we don't even realize how much history that we do have. So for all of the people that's tuning in right now that's currently in college and if they have to take a history class, all of that. Um, how do they navigate in those spaces when they know that when they're taught that Socrates, that he's the father of this or this person is the father of that and they know that it's lies, but you still got to get um, a good grade in that class. So how do they uh, navigate on the side of those spaces? Um, I mean, it's, 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 two ways, it's two ways to go about it. Um, you know, during those, during those classes, you can, you can speak up. Like um, my homeboy, my homeboy, he doesn't really study much in the sense of, like, black history and all those things. But he called me one day. He was, he was very frustrated in, uh, about a class because his his teacher was saying something along the lines of, um, like, the Black Panther Party and Malcolm X were um, were violent. And <laughs> essentially, like, they, they were violent, and they were just this, these negative groups, and, and Malcolm X was, was this negative person. Wow. And, um, you know, he was he was frustrated because he didn't speak up or say anything in that moment, but it really rubbed in the wrong way. And, and partially because he, he didn't really know the history that far in depth to want to go and challenge the professor on that level. He didn't feel comfortable doing that. But in those types of settings, I would say it's, it's important to speak up in those settings because um, he was at a predominantly white university. So mm -hmm. now you have this teacher who just dropped this information inside of this auditorium of all these, all these white people who are going to be your future CEOs. They're going to be your future managers. They're going to be your future, whatever, future landlords. They're, they're, that, that room is most likely to be those people. And so the, um, the book, what is the name of that book? It's, um, I can't think of the name of it, but the, the quote is, says, the, the lynching begins in the classroom. And it really does. The lynching begins in the classroom because when... You teach someone that a, a group of people have no value and they haven't contributed anything but destruction, then why should they not be hung? Mm. Why, why should they not? Why should they remain on your planet? So, um, yeah, it's, it's important to speak up during those moments because it has a huge impact in ways that you can't even see multiple years down the line. At the same time, on that note, there are some times where you like you just got to do what you got to do in order to to get through um this like everything is political for example i had a, i had a course where it's some sociology course and i i wrote an essay about basically i wrote an essay speaking on that there's not a war there's not a war on black men there's a war on black masculinity mm, that's deep that's deep and because when you, t when you think about what masculinity means in the Eurocentric sense, it's about domination and power. Right. And if you even look at how a lot of masculine women are treated, a lot of times they, they receive similar treatment to how masculine men are treated. So it's not so much a it's not so much a direct war on black men per se. That's black power. That's black domination. So mm. that's what the war is on. So I write an essay on that and um, I'm in the class and this, this professor, she's challenging my essay, like, because we, we speak about the essays and things, but she's challenging my yeah. essay. One, not understanding what I'm saying, but two, thinking that I'm coming from a perspective of not being informed. So I'm discussing what my point is and her question is like, yeah, but do you, you know that um, you know that sex and gender are different. You know that masculinity isn't necessarily associated like assigned to male or female and i'm i'm, I'm sitting i'm sitting there like i know this very well <laughs> I, and i know what i'm saying right and i meant to say what i what i said and so you're going back and forth yeah but in that situation she was thinking that i didn't know what i was talking about mm -hmm. or that my philosophy wasn't um 
grounded in something that was of logic that it was right. just that it was just like me talk, speaking reckless yeah. and uh inside of academia especially when it comes to like college campuses co college campuses there is even though they talk about like how liberal the thinking is and uh how how free and how stuff is supposed to flow and everybody's supposed to have their own view and perspective mm -hmm. there is a um a kind of a, a understood system of like what's acceptable to believe and what's not acceptable to believe That's right. what what's what falls into the realm of the liberal the liberal thinking that is deemed to be acceptable so you know in that in that situation that lady was grading my papers and she was a tough grader so um like i had to i had to like kind of maneuver that i had to write different because I, I needed to to go past that course in order to move forward and so you gotta you, do gotta, what you, gotta, do. you gotta evaluate it it's uh mm -hmm. you know even nip says it's a marathon yeah so you out here you just worried about a quick sprint and you, you thinking that that's that's the only thing but you gotta think long term so it's like all right you know what i'll water down my essay so i can get done with this with this course because i got a whole entire bigger vision for what i need right. to do and so you got to balance it and see what's actually worth it i mean what what good basically it's like this what good is being Huey P. Newton inside of your classroom if that stops you from being able to be Huey P. Newton in real life? So you gotta know.